everyone, welcome back. Um, so in lesson two, one, we talked about the beginning with the end in mind. So what did Jesus say? He said um, that if you hear what I'm saying and you don't do, then you're going to be like the foolish man who builds his house on a sand foundation that did not stand. But if you build your house on God's foundation, the rock, the firm foundation like the wise man did, then your house will withstand any storm. So with that in mind, now we're actually going to dig into what the sermon was about, what Jesus was saying to this large crowd of people that were willing to listen. So in lesson two, we're going to read Matthew 5, 13 through 16. So let's go ahead and dig in and read this part. It says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You are blessed when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice because your reward is greater in heaven, for that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. For this, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt should lose its taste, how could it be made salty? It no longer, it's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city seated on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand and gives it light for those who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they can see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Okay, so you might have recognized what these blesseds were. These are what most people call the Beatitudes, okay? And just a little side note, blessed actually means be blessed, happy, or fortunate. So when you hear blessed or if you read blessed, think of happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Happy are those. Um, and so that way, you kind of get the understanding of what, what God was actually trying to say. So we're going to kind of break this down verse by verse. Um, and so that way we can really understand the full meaning of what God was trying to say and tell the people that were listening. So it says, blessed are the poor in spirit for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Well, what does poor in spirit mean? It doesn't mean that they are living in poverty. It doesn't mean that they don't have um, the stuff that we have. It means that they are humble, okay? Christ says, blessed are the humble, the poor in spirit, blessed are the humble for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. They say, if you humble yourself and realize that this is not, you didn't earn any of this, that who earned this for you? Christ earned this for you, right? He died on the cross for you. He had to humble himself to die on the cross for you. He didn't have to, but he said, I love my people that much to die on the cross for you. So he humbled himself. That's what poor in spirit means, humbled. And what do they get out of that? The kingdom of heaven. They say they will receive the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Mourn, does that mean sad? Does that mean that they just walk around like Eeyore? No. They are people who realize that because of what God has done for them, that they don't deserve it, right? Kind of like the humble part, for they don't deserve it. But what do they get? They shall be comforted, right? So they're not going to be sad forever. And they're not going to be sad just then. But those who are happy through grief, right? Does that make kind of sense? Um, and then we're going to move on to meek and gentle. I said gentle because it pretty much describes what meek is, right? So blessed are those who are meek. Um, they will inherit the earth. So an example of this is Jesus, right? He stayed on the cross. He could have had Hundreds of angels come down and take him off that cross to show that he was the son of God. 
but he had to, kind of like the poor in spirit, he had to humble himself and realize that he had to do this for us, right? And so that's kind of what they will, meek will inherit the earth. Now, hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. When you're hungry and thirsty, you want something to eat, you want something to drink. And you will go to your kitchen, you will go to a restaurant, and you will go there to get food and water or a soda, right? To fill that hunger and thirst. So you don't have to be hungry and thirsty anymore. This is what it's saying. You want to do something, you long for something so much that you go out and you find it, right? So they w shall be Field. So they will be hungry and thirsty no more. This does not mean that they are hungry and thirsty for food and water. What did it say? Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Okay, a righteousness is the deeds and acts that please God. Okay, and um, that's what that means. And so they're longing. They want to please God. They want to make sure that they're getting everything to God. They want to make sure that they're doing everything that they can to please Him. Right? And that's what we should do. We should want to hunger and thirst to please God. And so that's what, that's what that verse is saying. Now, blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy. What does mercy mean? Or merciful? It kind of means like compassionate. Right, they feel sorry for people. They 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 have a heart that when someone is in need or someone um, is feeling sad, they they feel for that person. Okay, so what this verse is saying is, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. An example of that, and this is Jesus again. This is Jesus's example. He prayed for those while he was on the cross. He prayed for those people. He said, God, they don't know what they have done, but he said. Please forgive them. He's praying for mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Now, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Now, how do you describe that? How do you describe pure, maybe? Pure is being 100% without any tarnish. It means there is nothing bad about this they they are pure they have good intentions they are they're what they're striving for righteousness the right they're trying to please god so they have these pure intentions so blessed are the pure in heart for they will see god um and so if you have this pure mind this pure heart where it's where you're striving to please god you will see him one day and then it goes on and it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be call called sons of God. Now that one's kind of explanatory, explanatory, right? If you are a peacemaker, what does that mean? It means that you don't just, if someone comes up to you and starts yelling at your face, telling you all these nasty things about you, you're not just going to rebuttal and be like, well, you were this, 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 right? We're not going to do that. That's not what this is saying. It's saying be the peacemakers. Therefore, we're going to contain our thoughts, contain what we actually want to say and be like, thank you for that. I really appreciate your thoughts on me. It means a lot. You know, having peace, you don't want to start something. You also don't want to antagonize something. So that's what that means for they will be called sons of God, right? Because you're pleasing God. God didn't want all this um, war or this fighting all the time he wanted peace okay and then blessed are the persecuted for the kingdom of heaven is theirs persecution we kind of see that every day right whether you're in high school whether you're an adult whether you were in junior high when you realized it um but we kind of feel that persecution every day now persecution it's when someone tries to drive you out right they don't want you there Right? They think that you are just a bother being there. So they don't want you there. And so they're going to try to drive you out. That's what persecution means. But God said, if you are persecuted, the kingdom of heaven is yours. Right? Because you're not getting persecuted because of you. Right? If you're following Christ, you're not being persecuted because of you. You're being persecuted because you're following Christ. You're trying to do Christ's work. And so he says, because you are being persecuted for me, I will give you heaven.
Does that make sense? And so, as we looked at those, those are the Christian characteristics, right? That's what God is saying. This is what a Christian is. If you can be poor in spirit, if you can be blessed are the mourn, blessed are the meek slash gentle, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, the peacemakers, and the people being persecuted. Blessed are you, right? What did I say happy? I mean, what did I say blessed was? I said happy right so he said happy are the poor in spirit happy are the people who mourn happy are the meek happy are the people who hunger and thirst after righteousness happy are the merciful happy are the pure in heart happy are the peacemakers and happy are the people being persecuted and so um let's go ahead and we're going to move on to um kind of like the second part of this passage where it's Matthew 5, 11 through 12, where it says, You are blessed when they insult you and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice because your reward is greater in heaven, for that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Okay, so Jesus said, You are going to be blessed. Why? Because the people who insult you, which means who people who disgrace you, the people who are kind of like slandering at you, you will be blessed for that. Blessed are the people who persecuted you. We talked about persecution, right? And the Beatitudes. But blessed are the people who pers or blessed are you who are being persecuted, right? Because you're not being persecuted for yourself. Like I said before, you're being persecuted for what you're standing for. And then who falsely tell lies? That pretty much just says lies, right? Who falsely says things against you? That's just a bunch of lies, right? We can relate that kind of to gossip today. We can actually relate all the persecutions of kind of to gossip, right? If someone usually doesn't like you, they're going to try to persecute you. They're trying to gonna go tell everybody these awful things about you that are not true. And so as we remember that, God said, you're going to be blessed for, I, for what you are doing for me. Right. And then he says, be glad and rejoice because your reward is greater in heaven. For that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Y'all, that's a compliment. If he's comparing you to the prophets, that's that's like an honor. That's like the prophets were probably one of the most influential men in the Bible. They were very highly looked upon. So that's like a really big compliment. If I was to be considered in the ranking of a prophet that's great that's awesome right Jesus was a prophet right and he was yes he is the highest of the prophets but he was a prophet and so he's saying you know what I will call you like me that's what we want to be like right as Christians we want to strive to be like Jesus and so that's what he's saying because you're being persecuted like me I'm going to bless you. And so that is just so cool to me. And it gives me a whole lot of hope because even though this world is crazy and we go through all these kind of trials, to know that if we stand firm with Christ while being persecuted, we're going to be called just like him. And so that is so cool to me. Um, and now let's move on a little bit more. And it goes, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its taste, how can it be made salty? It no longer for good, but to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world, a city set out upon the hill who cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket, but rather on a lampstand and gives it light for those who are around the house. In the same way, light your light, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Right? Back then, the salt was used for so many different things, right? They were used to preserve food. They were used to flavor food. They were also used to heal wounds, okay? And so people used salt for a lot of things. But if that salt lost its purpose, if it was no longer salty, what good was it? It couldn't preserve their food. It couldn't heal their wounds, right? It couldn't flavor their food. God's saying, I want you to be the salt of the earth, right? I want you to um, flavor the world for better terms, okay? He wants you to go out and he wants you to tell people about him, right? He wants you to go out and share, okay? And also where it talks about you are the light of the world, a city sat upon a hill that cannot be hidden. Jerusalem, that's a great example. That city is on a hill, 
okay? It's a big hill. And so at night when everything around it is dark, what can you see if there's lights on? You can see those lights, right? You can see those lights shining for miles, okay? And so that's what God says. He says, I don't want you to hide your light, which is Him, through you, right? He says, I don't want you to hide your light. I want you to show it to people. I want you to be bold and show it to people, right? Um, stand out. Be different from everybody else. Be the light that glorifies the Father. Not be the light that glorifies Cheyenne. Be the light that glorifies the Father, right? That's what He wants us to do. The salt of the earth, right? If we lose our saltiness, we are no good. We're just a disciple that is just standing there. That's not going out to do anything. But if we are the salt, we are going out. We are pursuing people, right? We are wanting to go after what God has told us to do. And then if we are the light of the world, we are going out. We are shining our light. So if that is through the works that we do, like it says, um, then they can see Christ through us. And so that is so cool. If you can, if you walk up to somebody and you don't know anyone in that room and you walk in there and you sit down and you're just talking to people, okay, what are they going to see? Are they going to see that light for Christ or are they going to see that light for you, who you are? Right? We don't want that. We want to be the light that shines for Christ. And so as we remember this, these are just some of the things that we need to remember as we are going along with our lesson, okay? Um, so please come back next time, and we will continue to dig a little bit deeper in the Sermon on the Mount. And thank you again for joining.